Hello, hello, hello. I'm Janessa Prudhomme, wife, mom, Jesus lover, and your podcast host. You're listening to the hashtag Create Your Earth Life podcast. This podcast has converted with me from new age to Christian, and the goal here is to help you grow in your faith through Bible studies, testimonies, and real life experiences. So ex-New Agers, newborn Christians, mamas, entrepreneurs, and those who want to grow in their faith, you have come to the right podcast. Say a prayer, grab your drink of choice, and let's get growing. Hi guys, welcome back to the hashtag Create Your Earth Life podcast YouTube channel. My name is Janessa Prudhomme, and we are going to be continuing to study in the book of Matthew, which also happens to be the beginning of the gospel. It is a very exciting time today. If you are feeling unfulfilled, lonely, depressed, anxious, then it is a wonderful thing that you are here because Jesus is the one who can give you comfort, who can give you peace, and who can fulfill you. And it is such a blessing that we get to read his word. Here it says in Hebrew 4.12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joint and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So we are blessed that we get to read the word of God, which is living and active. It will completely change us from the inside out, and that is such a blessing. And I'm so happy to be here with all of you who are watching this video or listening on the hashtag Create Your Life, Earth Life podcast, different podcast platforms. Let's dive right in. I just want to start with saying that when we do Bible study here, we start with prayer and then we read the scripture that we're going to read and then we dissect it. So today we're going to start with prayer. We're going to read Matthew 2 and dissect it and then Matthew 3 and dissect it. Oops, sorry guys. I also want to remind you what books I am using to study with. So I will be using the Life way women's bible christian standard bible to read from and also if there are any notes that we need to read from um from it i will read from it and i will be using the cultural backgrounds bible study book as well so this bible study we are also including the cultural background so i can paint a very clear picture of what was going on during the time that jesus was here and so you have a full understanding of the gospel but of course as i said in the last video and if you have not watched it check it out because we have an intro and then we also have a little bit of my testimony and then we start in matthew 1 but as i said in my last video that I'm very excited to be sharing this with you. I have a lot of great information. I feel the Holy Spirit has told me to share the gospel with you guys because it has completely changed my life and I want to help you guys grow spiritually, grow in your faith, have a stronger faith, but do not listen to everything I say. Don't just listen to me. Pick up your Bible, sit down and take time to read it and let the Holy Spirit guide you. So today we're gonna be reading Matthew 2. If you wanna open up your books or just Turn up the sound and get a drink that you would like. We are starting with wise men visit the king. So we have to remember that last week we finished reading Matthew 1, which was about Mary conceiving as a virgin from the Holy Spirit, Jesus inside of her. And then an angel comes to Joseph saying, don't worry, Mary has been faithful. You can still marry her and you will have a son named Jesus. So now we are moving forward and this one is called Wise Men Visit the King. Um, that's the start of Matthew 2. So let's pray and then dive right in. Dear Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, please guide me today as I read this Bible study and please help others who are listening that their hearts and minds will be pierced by you, that they will be moved, that they will be given life, that will, they will get clarity, that they will have comfort, that they will have peace from you, Lord, that you will speak to them and soften their hearts and renew their minds. And Lord, that if they are having any anxiety or depression today, that you will take it away from them and that you will help them focus their attention on you because we know you are the one true God and that you know all things and that you can comfort us and guide us through anything and all things. 
And Lord, just guide us today. Help us understand the Bible the way you want us to understand it. Lord, guide us, and please, Lord, speak to us through the Bible. In your name I pray, amen. All right, guys, let's get started. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star at, it ri star at its rising, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I can go and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and there it was, the star they had seen at its rising. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. The flight into Egypt. After they were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and escaped to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod's death, so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. The Massacre of the Innocents. Then Herod, when he realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, flew into a rage. He gave orders to massacre all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, in keeping with the time he had learned from the wise men. Then what was spoken through Jer Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be consoled because they are no more. The return to Nazareth. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, because those who intended to kill the child are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and entered the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Ar Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the region of Galilee. Then he went and settled in a town called Nazareth to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. So that was Matthew 2, and now we're going to break it down. So Matthew 2 starts with wise men visiting Jerusalem, and wise men were known also as magi. They were known to be interpreters of dreams. They were also astrologers, which is a form of divination. So it is against God's word to be an astrologer, to look at the stars and say, okay, this is what my day is gonna be like, or okay, this is what my future is gonna be like, because God knows. Those are signs from heaven, the stars, the sky. There are things in this world that are signs from heaven, the, the beauty of the world, the creation of the trees, trees and the animals and the people, those things do not tell us or guide us in life. God is in control and he knows all. He is the one who knows our futures. So these people, these uh, wise men, they said they could interpret dreams, which as we know in the Old Testament that there was a guy named Joseph. He could interpret dreams because he was so close with God. Like he would pray to God and then he would get his answers about people's dreams from God, where these people just believed themselves could interpret dreams. And then also as astrologers, again, that's divination. So against God's word, um, forbidden by scripture. So they went to Jerusalem to see the king because they assumed if this baby boy who is said to be 
king of the world, king of everything is born, it's gonna be in the palace. That's that's what they were probably assuming. So that's why they went to the king, King Harad, great King Harad, to ask where is where is he who has been born king of the Jews? And I also wanna add in another thing about astrology. It is interesting that nowadays people use astrology. You go look in a newspaper or you go look in a magazine or you go online and say, oh, my astrology sign says this for the day or whatnot. But back then, astrology was a huge thing. So it was so big of a belief that comets and other heavenly predicted signs would tell people, oh, this person's gonna rule or this person's gonna rule this or whatever. So some rulers would kill other rulers so they could be the ones that were in that place because they believed, oh, that comment went through or that star appeared, okay, this is what's gonna happen. They had such a strong belief in astrology. Even though what the wise men practice was divination and was against God word, this is a prime example of God calling followers from unexpected places. So then we move on to see that Harad tells the wise men, oh, go find the baby. And then when you find him, come back to me and tell me because I wanna go worship him. And Harad is being a big liar. He is known for a lot of terrible stuff during that time. And so we're gonna dive into that. When he heard about Jesus being born, he was disturbed. And it says that he was disturbed. So he is lying to those wise men. At the time, Harad politically worshiped and acknowledged the one true God and fake gods. Harad was a very powerful and hungry and violent man. During that time, Harad put a golden eagle on top of a temple and a couple of young religious disciples took the golden eagle down. So they must have been thinking of it as like an idol. So they took it down, Harad executed them. Harad was also very protective of his power. So you can imagine if someone came to him and was like, oh, the king of the Jews has been born. You can imagine Harad was probably like, no, I'm king, that's my power. Nobody's taking it away from me. No baby's taking this away from me. Harad had also during that time potentially drowned his brother-in-law. It says that his brother-in-law had a accident drowning, but they found out, archeologists found out that the pool was very shallow. It is thought that maybe Harad was the one that drowned him. His wife, his first wife, and called his favorite wife, Miriam, it's M-A-R-I-A-M-N-E, so I think it's Miriam, was falsely accused of adultery, so didn't actually do it, and he had her strangled. Later on though, he named a tower in his palace in her honor. Herod executed two of his sons who were falsely accused of plotting against him. Five days before Herod died, he killed a third son who actually was the one who said that his other brothers were plotting against him when it wasn't true, his other sons. They fra he framed his brothers. And then on the day he died, this is crazy, he ordered many nobles to be arrested and executed to be sure people were mourning that day. But once he died, the nobles were released and people celebrated his death. So he didn't want people to celebrate his death. So he wanted to kill people so people would mourn on the day of his death even though he knew people did not like him and they were gonna celebrate when he was dead. So it is no surprise that Herod wanted to know where Jesus was and lied about wanting to worship him. And then when the wise man never returned to tell King Herod, he became angry and fearful that Jesus possibly could be a king who ruled over him. So he gave orders to kill all boy children, two years old and younger, and in and around Bethlehem, which is, so sad. Another thing with Matthew 2, this chapter, you can see God's hands all throughout this chapter, as well as prophecies fulfilled. So here are a few examples. The wise men were warned in a dream not to go back to see King Herod. Obviously that was God warning them to not go back so that Jesus could survive this time. An angel visited Joseph, Jesus' earth father, in a dream and told him to go to Egypt with Jesus and his mother, Mary, and to stay there because Herod was searching for him to kill him. So again, another time where an angel from the Lord came to Joseph and said, you need to flee, you need to go, we need to protect Jesus. And then Joseph, Mary, and Jesus stayed in Egypt until Herod died, which fulfilled the prophecy from Hosea 11.1, 1, 
out of Egypt I called my son, which was written over 700 years ago, or not from now, but 700 years before that time. Another prophecy from Jeremiah was fulfilled after all the boys under two were killed. It said, a voice was heard in Ramah weeping and great mourning, and she refused to be consoled because they are no more. So saying that the children are no more and the mothers refused to be consoled because they were so sad about their children. Once Herod was dead, an angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream and told him to move himself, Mary and Joseph, to Israel because Herod was dead now. And then Joseph was warned in a dream to not go to Judea because Herod's son was now ruling Archelaus. Archelaus, I think that's how you say it. So they went to the region of Galilee, settling in Nazareth, which fulfills another prophecy that Jesus would be a Nazarene. To emphasize a little more on Herod's son, he was also a mean man. So he would have also probably tried to kill Jesus. He had an inability to keep peace. The Romans removed him and banished him to a different area, to Gaul, G-A-U-L, because he was such an anger man, but he was also out of control. So he was not able to keep any kind of peace at the time. So he was removed by the Romans as king. What is very interesting about Nazareth, you would think the king of the Jews, the king of the world, you would think he would be born in some nice palace like the wise men thought, and that he would live in a nice place and that people would treat him special, but that was not the case. He actually moved to Nazareth, which happened to be a very small town of about 500 people. It was surrounded by mountains. It wasn't a place people went through. Like if you were going to Nazareth, you were intentionally going there. You weren't, you know, going through Nazareth to get to other places. I'm not even sure there were roads that went to Nazareth. Um, you definitely had to hike your way there. There was one water supply there from a well and it is currently now called Mary's Well. And what's interesting about Nazareth is that they would dig pits for storage so they could store their stuff in there. And then after Jesus, after Jesus's time, they would actually dig deeper under the pits so they had places to hide and to escape to if people tried to take over Nazareth. Nazareth was never mentioned in the Old Testament and it is thought to be a forgotten town in Galilee. So as you can see, Jesus was not born anywhere fancy like the palace. He was raised in a small village most people didn't know about and by his parents, Mary and Joseph, who happened to not conceive him. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and they were always being led by God. So that is the end of Matthew 2 and now we will read Matthew 3. Chapter 3 of Matthew, we are now fast forwarding about 30 years, and this is the start of Jesus' ministry. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. For he is the one spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, who said, A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord make his path straight. Now John had a camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locust and wild honey. Then people from Jerusalem, all Judea and all the vicinity of the Jordan were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath therefore produce fruit consistent with repentance and don't presume to say to yourself we have abraham as our father for i tell you that god is able to raise up children for abraham from these stones the axe is already at the root of the trees therefore every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire i baptize baptize you with the water for repentance, for the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand and he will, he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with fire that never goes out. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him saying, I need to be baptized by you and yet you come to me? Jesus answered him, 
allow it for now because this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John allowed him to be baptized. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened for him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And that is the end of Matthew three. And it is such a wonderful way to see how Jesus' ministry starts. So we have John the Baptist, who is believed to be related to Jesus because Jesus' mom, Mary, and John the Baptist's mom, Elizabeth, were both related. So it is thought that maybe Jesus and John the Baptist were cousins. And John is telling people, you need to repent. The kingdom of heaven is here. The kingdom of heaven is coming. You need to repent. You need to turn from your wicked ways and you need to get baptized. He has people coming to him in the wilderness at the Jordan River. He also has Jesus come to him. And when Jesus comes, heaven opened up above and they say they can see God descending, ascending. I think it's ascending like a dove above them. So we're gonna break this all down right now. As it says, John was wearing a camel hair garment with a leather belt and a locust, which is a type of short horned grasshopper and he ate honey with the locusts. He had just what God had provided him in the wilderness. There are two reasons why John the Baptist would be in the wilderness. One, it was safer for prophets to gather people in the wilderness. And the second reason is that the Old Testament prophet Isaiah said there would be a new exodus where God would gather his people from exile. God would establish a way through the wilderness just like he did in Exodus when he saved the Hebrews from the Egyptians. And if you haven't read Exodus yet, Moses goes to Egypt where they have hundreds of th thousands of Hebrew slaves that have been there for about, I think, 400 years. And Moses says to the Egyptians, release the slaves. We need to go worship in the woods. We need to go into the wilderness. And the Egyptians are like, mm, not going to do that. These are my, our slaves. We need to get our work done. And there's a lot of plagues that God has happen. And it's a, a wonderful story of God's faithfulness and um, has symbolism now in the New Testament. So you can also see in Matthew 3 that John calls out the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These people loved the law. They followed it. They preached it but they had hard hearts. So they would say, this is what God's word says and you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. But they were not accepting of sinners. If someone was a sinner, then they were bad. They didn't like them. They did not accept them. They were not caring. They were not trying to save people. They thought you need to be righteous or you're a bad person and God is angry with you. And they had hard hearts for people who were not perfect. They thought they were perfect and they thought people should serve them. They didn't think that they needed to serve others. They thought because they knew the law that they were better than everyone else. So John says to them, brood of vipers, which was a huge insult back then. It was thought that vipers were born by hatching inside their mother's womb. Then they would gnaw their way out, resulting in killing their mother. And at that time, killing a parent was one of the most reprehensible offensive offenses conceivable. John also says to them that their repentance should produce fruit. Now what this means is their repentance should produce a soft heart, that they should be forgiving others, they should be loving others, they should be kind to others. You can see when someone has repented, you can see in their life like wow, there's something special about them. They're so kind, they're so forgiving, they're so loving they have really good fruit in their life. That's what it means to have good fruit. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees did not show good fruit. They were actually mean to other people if those people were not perfect in their eyes. John the Baptist also says to the Pharisees and the Sadducees that they think that they are saved because Abraham was their father. And what he's saying is that God chose Israel, which were the descendants of Abraham. And they think, oh, well, Abraham's our father. Um, so we're just automatically saved. They don't realize that it's more than that. 
people had the belief that all of Israel would be saved because of Abraham. And if you don't know who Abraham is, he is from the Old Testament and he is the one who did not have children until he was about 100 years old. Him and his wife wanted children, they prayed for children, and God said, you will have children and you will have tons of descendants and they will all be blessed. They waited and they waited and they waited and then his wife, um, I believe her name was Elizabeth, did not have any children until she was like 90 years old and he was like 100. It's a, a, an amazing story and you should absolutely definitely read it. It is, I believe, in Genesis. And the truth of the matter is, to be saved is an independent thing. So nowadays, after Jesus' death and resurrection, it is required to believe in him with your mind and your heart, ask for forgiveness, repent from your sins, which means to completely do a 180, turn from your sins and put your focus on Jesus and to get to know him and follow him. And that is how you become saved by Jesus. When you start believing in Jesus and you start praying and you start spending time with him, you are going to see your life completely and totally change from the inside out. Because I know I did and I know so many other people's lives have changed because of Jesus. It says in the New Testament, we will get to it eventually, that God makes us a new creation. He gives us a new life. And when John the Baptist says, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire, the ones who are not saved will go to hell. That is what he is saying. And then John continues to talk about how he is baptizing people and calling them to repentance, but there is someone more powerful than him that is coming to baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is speaking of Jesus, and this is where we can make the connection that Jesus is God, because only God can pour out his spirit, which he promised to do at the time of the coming of rest restoration. restoration. And fire signifies end time judgment. And if you are not saved and you're getting judged, then your destination is hell. When John the Baptist says in verse 12, his winnowing shovel is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with fire that never goes out. So this represents saved people as wheat and people going to hell as chaff. And it says unquenchable fire, meaning they will burn for forever. And um, it's in the NIV that says unquenchable. And in the Christian standard version, it says fire that never goes out. So it is thought that hell is forever. And when you go to hell, you are burning forever. There is no end to it. It is eternal. So no matter what, you'll have eternal life, whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. John the Baptist gets to baptize Jesus and the heavens were opened. It says the spirit of God was descending like a dove and coming down on him. Doves were a symbol for a new world, which is so true. When you believe in Jesus and you love Jesus and you give your heart to Jesus and you follow him, he gives you a completely and totally new life. It really does feel like a new world. You see things differently. You think about things differently. You act differently. It is amazing. Jesus has done amazing things in my life for my family and for friends and it is just an exceptional thing. So if you haven't yet, absolutely accept Jesus into your heart. Then God speaks from heaven. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So that is the end of Matthew 3. Today we read Matthew 2 and Matthew 3. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this Bible study. I hope you guys take the time to sit down and read it for yourself and see where the Holy Spirit leads you if he has not led you here. If this Bible study is encouraging you in any way, please share with your friends, your family, your followers. And I hope to see you guys next time here on the hashtag Create Your Earth Live podcast YouTube channel. You can also hear these Bible studies on the podcast, different platforms. All right, let's end in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this time with you. Thank you for this Bible study. I want to be completely and totally honest with the people watching that when I first started this Bible study today, I was feeling very anxious for personal reasons, personal things in my life. And sitting down and reading the Bible and sharing the understandings that I have have 
given me peace and clarity and I feel calmer and I pray that that is the result in others' lives that if, if people watching were feeling any type of way that does not align with you, Jesus, I pray that you give them peace, that you help calm them and that you help them feel confident in you. In your name I pray, amen. All right, guys, have a blessed day. Wait, I have something for you. If you are a new believer, a parent, someone who wants to start a business or ministry online, or someone who loves faith-based jewelry, stick around. For new believers, I have a prayer journal for you. It is called Bearing Fruit Prayer Journal. This prayer journal includes Bible verses about spiritual warfare and emphasizes the importance of prayer. There are three main focuses for this prayer journal. The first one is gratitude and how you can express it. The second one is forgiveness and how it is important to God, ourselves, and others. And the third focus is serving others. There are also two bonus ideas that will help you grow in your faith. The reason I wrote this Bearing Fruits Prayer Journal is because these are the topics that Jesus had me focusing on when he first saved me. I think they're super important. Serving others is super important. Forgiving others is super important. And being grateful is super important. And if you are having difficulty with submitting yourself to Jesus and following these things, because some of these things are very difficult, forgiving people who have hurt you really badly can be really difficult, then I suggest that you get this Bearing Fruits Prayer Journal. It's free, completely free to you, and it will help you through some of your struggles or just help you have a stronger prayer life. For parents and people who are raising children, I also have a freebie for you, and that is the Planting Seeds 10 Ways to Teach Your Children About God Guide. And this also includes a game. A few ideas that are mentioned in this guide are children's Bible podcasts that you can listen to in the car or anywhere else, children's Christian shows, a bedtime book that you can read to your children at night where you can share and talk about God and it has prayers and verses and different topics in it. And of course, as I mentioned already, there is a game that you can play at dinner. The game includes a bunch of questions and you pull the questions out of a jar and then you read the question to your child and then you discuss the question and help them answer it and find answers about God. And all the answers are included with the guide. My family and I have really enjoyed this game together. For people who want to start a business or ministry online, I have a faith-based entrepreneurial entrepreneurship ebook. This book has three years of information inside of it. I have been on the online space for about three years. I have a podcast. I have a blog. I have this YouTube channel. I have been on social media. I have done endless amounts of research on how to be successful online. And I have documented all this information and I've put it into a book. So if you are deciding you want to start on the online world, you want to have a ministry, you want to have a business, you don't know where to start or it's just too overwhelming, all the information, I have put it all in one book and I have continuously updated it. So it was currently updated for 2023. There is information about podcasting, about YouTubing, about social media, about blogging, information about starting a email list, information on how to monetize online, there is everything in here that you need to know. And at the very end, there is a business strategy plan. So I'm going to help you have a business plan before you get started so you know where you wanna be on the online space, what you need to be doing, and the best way you're going to be able to make money and grow an audience over time. If you are feeling God, call you to the online space, then I would do it now. There are 5 billion people who use the internet. People every year are buying more and more online. And of course, the newer generations are all about technology. They are using the internet. That is what everyone's doing. So if you feel God calling you, I absolutely would buy this ebook. It is a great price, $10, very affordable, gives you all the information that you need to get started on the online space. The last thing I wanna share with you guys is Gravy Shop. 
Gravy Shop is a faith-based jewelry shop online and they have adorable jewelry, great quality, and I can get you a discount if you use my name, Janasa, J-E-N-A-S-A, you can get 15% off your purchase. And the wonderful thing about Gravies is that most of their jewelry is under $30. It is fabulous quality. I've been wearing my king ring. As you can see, this is my king ring. I wear it every single day. I've been wearing it for months. The king ring is a great reminder that Jesus is king. Every time I look down at it, it's a reminder that we need to keep our mind on heaven and be thinking about Jesus and the afterlife in heaven with him. I also occasionally wear my galaxy necklace, which is made out of moonstone and I think it's super adorable. Every piece of jewelry you purchase, you will also receive a verse with it. Gravies has many different options. They have earrings, adjustable rings, bracelets, reversible necklaces, which means you get two for the price of one. Gravies has pieces that are handmade in Israel. They have pieces that are made with Roman glass and they have pieces with fragments of glass discovered during archeological excavation in the Holy Land. I would highly suggest you check out Gravies. They have super cute jewelry, very affordable, and they have sales all the time. Use the code Janasa, J-E-N-A-S-A, for 15% off. And you can locate Gravies Jewelry at gravies.shop. G-R-A-V-I-E-S dot shop. If you are interested in the Bearing Fruit Prayer Journal, the Planting Seeds, 10 Ways to Teach Your Children About God, the Faith-Based Entrepreneurship eBook, or Gravy's Jewelry, check out the show notes. All the links are down there. And I hope you guys have the best day ever. God bless you all.